What's up guys? How's your morning going? It's a little early for me. It's about 7.15 a.m. here Pacific Standard Time. Wanted to film a new video for tomorrow about my new car and why I got a new car. I'll show you guys coming up uh, the new car that I got. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. I actually really like it a lot. Something I wasn't actually really looking to get, uh, but different circumstances kind of changed my decision um, in regards to why I ended up getting that car as opposed to the other car that I was looking for because I was looking for a, a 2017 F-Type SVR for a while, probably about three weeks uh, non-stop, just kind of looking on basically every single uh, auto search engine wholesale, auction, all that kind of stuff across most of the West Coast. I didn't really want to get anything that'd be too far away. It really hasn't been too much, but I finally found one. <clears throat> it was a black one, very nice. And I loaded my car into a our trade appraisal tool and something came up on the Carfax on my car that I had no idea was on there. Moderate damage reported two times, which is pretty crazy. Moderate damage, if you guys aren't familiar, is not, not something you really want to see on a Carfax, just because you don't really know what, I guess, that kind of damage is and how much it costed out to you, if they got it held under insurance, that kind of stuff. I went in buying my 2017 F-Type, the white one that you guys have seen on my channel. Uh, if you guys are new, uh, some videos and everything about my car. That's my that was my daily driver for about the past seven months. So yeah, I bought my my 17 F type last year in um, the May June time area, and it was down in Oregon. I'll show you guys kind of how far it is from where I am to where that dealership was. And Oregon is like a four hour drive, so it was actually it was not that bad. It's the closest one in on the West Coast that I liked. Uh, of course, I pulled the Carfax and everything, and it had some minor damage reported once. But you know, it's nowadays that's pretty standard um, thing to see on a Carfax. It just means they may have cosmetically damaged something, got it repaired, or may have not got it repaired. So I went in there looking through the photos and the videos, and then you know, looking at the car in person, didn't really find anything. Uh, maybe a, like a few little small things, but it, it was really in pretty good condition. And it was a one owner lease car out of California, so it was pretty straightforward. They did most of the, the scheduled maintenances and everything and then turned the car back in. So I was like, hey, that's pretty good. Um, obviously you should be looking for some kind of a adjusted little discount off the car just because you know you got a damage reported on it, a minor damage reported. So there should be some kind of costs that helps you because uh, you know when you try to resell that thing you're gonna maybe lose a little bit of money or someone's not gonna value your car as much just because of the minor damage reported so got all that done got the car <clears throat> it was great loved it but always wanted like the, the SVR look from the F type just because of you know the way that they drive the way they look just love how it looks more aggressive and everything all that stuff so when it came time to me looking at my car to uh, trade it in, that popped up and I was just like, oh crap, what the heck is this? This is something I've never seen before. And unfortunately, Carfax does take some time to update some stuff. And just my luck, that popped up a month before I bought the car. And it changed. I pulled the Carfax last year and it was a minor damage reported. I was like, great, that's fine. Pulled it again about a week ago and it shows moderate damage reported and it happened twice one right before i got the car and then the second one was like a month before that so for some reason it changed and then another one popped up and that's just kind of your luck unfortunately like it wasn't that part wasn't the dealer's fault because that that popped up on the carfax literally after i bought it after they acquired the car and sold the car to me um so i can't really be too mad at that but I was really hoping that uh, coming from that dealership that they wouldn't have bought car, a car that would have been disclosed with that kind of damage reported, even though it did change. Because um, they do get they do get to look through the history of the vehicle and then <clears throat> there are a bunch of videos and usually photos of the car's condition. And I get it, I think the person who owned the car before that, 
gotten it fixed through insurance and everything because the listing that was popped up on the Carfax is something you really don't want to see on your Carfax. Motor damage reported and it was literally every single part of the car. It was front, back, left, right, and then undercarriage damage reported. Now I couldn't really see anything. We put it up on a lift a couple days ago and I couldn't really see anything under the car. I, there were some scratches and stuff, but I don't know if they got stuff fixed or not. There's just no way to tell. And that kind of just put a bad taste in my mouth. I was like, hey, that's, I, I need to get out of this car. It may have been some minor shit and stuff, but that's really something you, I don't want to carry on my car because it's just not a good feeling to have, not knowing that you bought a car that had moderate damage reported twice and then driving that car to, and owning that car because down the road, especially after you're out of warranty, you rack up some more miles on that car, that car is gonna be priced at the bottom of the list for retail values. No one's gonna choose this car over a car that doesn't have that kind of stuff reported on it or maybe is less significant and that kind of stuff. So you're you're really gonna get hosed on that thing. So I decided to just bite the bullet. The car was still under warranty for another like 10 months and relatively low miles, about 36,000 miles was on it. I put about 6,000 on it and just bite the bullet and I decided just to get something at our dealership. Uh, I was looking around here too, found something. I gotta drive the brand, you know, while I'm working at a Jaguar Land Rover dealer, which is fine, it's great because I love the product, love working there, and we got some cars to choose. I just, I wasn't gonna settle for a car. I love driving, so, you know, driving to work, driving to and from work, is always fun just because of the car that I'm driving in. So I didn't want to give any of that up and you know, just driving around for fun, you know, having a great car, which led me down to one choice of a car to get. Uh, I really like it, it's brand new. I'm enjoying it a lot. I've been driving it for the past four days. Yeah, four days, got on the 28th, which was on a Thursday of January. Um, it's, a, it's a great car. I did a video on it too, uh, one of my past videos, and I love the car. It's, it's great, it's a little different, you know. I wasn't planning on getting rid of my car that fast, uh, but it is what it is. I just got the short end of the stick this time with that thing popping up. You could either live with it or just do something and move on. So that's what I'm doing. Hope you guys enjoy. Here is my new car. This is one of the cars that I really wanted when I, they released it. At that time, I was driving the at a 19 F Pace S, which was at that time a supercharged V6, 380 horsepower. It was a it was a fun car. It just wasn't you know really something that I was gonna keep for a while. I mean, you can only do so much with 380 horsepower, right? But you know, being in the Pacific Northwest, it's kind of nice to have. This car is its completely own vehicle. This is the SVR. Jag, Jag decided to make their super uh, SUV, crammed a the five liter supercharged V8 engine into an F-Pace, which is pretty sweet. Same engine as my F-Type. Same horsepower, 550 horsepower, 502 pound feet of torque. Still does 0 to 60 in uh, 3.7 seconds, which is pretty crazy, you know, for an SUV. 4,300 pounds, actually, I believe. I'd have to double check. Um, so it's really not that heavy. It's night and day between my F Pace S that I used to have. This car, you know, with the SVR tuned suspension. Uh, bigger brakes uh, Shift the transmissions a little different. It's still a ZF 8-speed transmission, uh, but it is tuned a little bit It handles a lot differently. It drives a lot like a car and I know the F-Paces are on a car platform and everything off the XF platform um, But this just feels so planted just because of The power that it's basically backed up by 
and you know you got the active quad exhaust which is really nice yes it's not as loud as my f-type was my f-type sounded like a bunch of shotguns being fired off which is pretty awesome this car is more of like a growl there are a lot of pops and backfire i'm not driving it too hard now it's only got 178 miles on it right now so once i you know break it in a little bit i'm gonna be pretty much just driving around ripping around in um manual mode of course i'm in dynamic mode all the time we got the exhaust on it's still it's still loud it's more of like a a growl now which is fine you know maybe down the road if, if i maybe like, like this car is like a daily and everything keep this this is this is a much you know more utility and user-friendly car like something I can grow into, keep as like a, a daily and stuff. So you know, you can do some exhaust modifications and maybe tuning. Oh, I hope you guys heard that. <laughs> um, anyways, it just, I love the way it handles. It grips the road phenomenally. It's... The steering is just so good. It feels really like tight and dialed in. The platform, I love the F-Pace platform. It's very solid. Of course, you got all this room in the back that I don't need right now. But it's just like, it's like a Jag drive, which is awesome. Something I never would have experienced if I never worked there, just because I'm sure as you know, oops, there are, the next person knows, uh, before I worked here, I, I never knew anything about the brand. I just thought they're all unreliable, that stuff. I thought the only cars that they made were the X-Type and the S-Type. That's it. In the SVR, the upgraded brakes, the SVR body kit, it's got functional um, hood scoops for heat extractors. It's got um, heat extractors for the wheel wells on the front, the active exhaust on top of, you know, the interior. This one is the, um, it's the lozenge quilted Windsor seats. I never thought I'd be owning a car with light interior too, but it's, it's awesome, I love it. It's a nice interior, if you guys look right here, it's duo tone. Like, look at those seats. Those seats are awesome. Sports seats, ebony inserts with ivory exterior. I mean, the whole interior is a duo tone, ivory with ebony interior, the whole, top is a suede cloth headliner very premium feeling the 10 inch uh in control touch pro which actually is not that bad on my f pace i really had no problems with it so for what i use out of it music that's about it it does the job i love the sound system it's a meridian 825 watt sound system these brakes are actually i read a uh, I think it was on motor trend for the 19 that the brakes weren't that good and they thought it felt like the same on the f-pace premium four cylinder which is definitely not the case the four cylinder you're not expecting great performance on it so you're not going to have super super tight dialed in brakes on the the 25t premium i think this is going to be a good car to keep it's something that i'll be able to grow into and you know just add another car i already got an appointment next week to get the windows tinted and my windshield tinted i always do that to every single one of my cars i hate being inside of a fishbowl and the tinted windshield has i think multiple uses one it blocks out a lot of the uv rays uh, from hitting like special on this with the windsor leather on the dashboard and everything um, it blocks a lot of the sunlight out a lot of glare like when it's sunny out and everything kind of impacts your vision a little bit because when the sun's shining through your windshield it bounces off and it's super bright so when you have the tinted windshield on it it keeps it cooler it blocks out a lot of that light from bouncing in um, so there are a lot of functional uses too on top of aesthetic uses which is pretty much why i get it just because i think it looks cooler and it um you know people can't see inside my car as easily anyways that's it let me know what you guys think I know I, I was telling you guys that I was looking at maybe getting a new F-Type R or a pre-owned SVR. That action led me to try out this car and this car. I love this car. I'm glad I got this car. I actually really, I did not think I was going to actually be this excited to have this car. So yeah, overall I'm happy. 
hope you guys enjoyed that video. Sorry it's a little a long and rambly, but that is my new car, Half Pace SVR. If you guys like that video, please hit the like button. Also, I'd appreciate it if you guys smash that subscribe button down there. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.